Hello friends, my name is Baji. Welcome to our channel. This is our episode number 5 in our performance testing must have skills series. In this video, we will discuss server architecture concepts. If you watch this series for the first time, please watch previous module videos and continue these concepts. You can find the playlist series link in the description. Let's start with the topics covered in this video. First, we will discuss what exactly is a server and then we will discuss different types of servers. Basically, there are many types of servers and in this video, we will cover some of them. Finally, we we will discuss the differences between physical server, virtual machine and containers. Without any further delay, let's dive into it. So what is a server? Let's look at the Wikipedia server role definition. Servers are those who work at a restaurant or a bar attending to customers and supplying them with food and drink as requested. That means servers will supply the requested things. Here who will request a thing? It can be a client or customer, isn't it? If you understand this concept, then you have understood the concept of server in computing terms as well. Let's look at the server definition in computing terms. A server is a computer system combination of hardware and software that provides a service to other computer systems. That means server is providing a service to the other computer systems. Here the other computer systems are called client computers. The client can connect to the servers through an internet or local area network also called as LAN. As I said the server provides service to the client so it can provide different services. Let's look at some of the services. File services. File servers can store files and make them accessible to clients over a network. It makes the process easy for multiple clients to access the shared data. Next one print services. Servers can manage and distribute print jobs to network connected printers. In an organization we will have a centralized printer. So, so this printer server will allow users to print document from their devices. Next one email services. Servers can handle email storage, sending, receiving and forwarding messages for clients in an organization. For example these days everyone is using Gmail for communication purpose. So Google has servers that provide mail services. Whenever we are sending or receiving receiving mail behind the scenes we are connecting to google servers data management services servers can act as a centralized data storage system providing a reliable and scalable solution for storing large amount of data to clients these are not the only services and there are many more i just named a few for our discussion purposes hope you understand a server could be dedicated to handle one of the services for example one server for managing file services and one server for email services and another server for data services we can see this kind of setup in larger organizations they generally dedicate one server for a specific services. We can also set up one server to handle each of the services and this type of setup can be found in smaller companies. For example, the same server can provide file services, email services and data services. Another important thing that we should understand here is that a server is not just a physical computer. It is a role that computer takes. So we can set up any ordinary desktop as a computer. So we can set up any ordinary desktop computer as a server. It does not need to be a powerful computer. For example, we can set up a desktop at home as a file server. We can store and share files with other family members or friends. However, desktop computers do have certain limitations. Before you decide to design a desktop computer as a server, you should keep the limitations in your mind. They are designed for personal or individual use only. For example, we can use our desktop for general tasks like web browsing, document creation, editing and gaming etc. The desktop uses a processor that designs for personal or individual needs. It supports only a single processor. They are only designed to work with themselves not with another processor. Desktops run the operating system designed for individual use only. For example like Windows 10, Linux operating system, Mac OS. Desktop computers are not designed for continuous operation. They are usually shut down or put to sleep when not in use. However, servers should be available 24 by 7 and provide service to the client based on their need. Desktops are optimized for individual performance and may not be as scalable as servers for handling a large number of concurrent connections or tasks. In summary, desktop computers are intended for individual use while servers are designed to provide services and resources to multiple users. Servers offer high performance reliability and scalability making them suitable for business critical application and tasks. Now let's look at different types of servers. Basically the type of server is determined by the service that it is providing. Let's look at different types of servers. File server. A file server is dedicated to storing and managing files. It will allow users to access them remotely over a network. It also provides centralized file storage and also facilitates file sharing and collaboration. Web server. In general, a web server hosts websites and web applications. It will serve web pages to users who access them through their web browsers like Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Firefox. They handle HTTP requests and responses. Here HTTP means hypertext transfer protocol. This protocol is used for communication purpose. We can discuss more about the protocol in the upcoming videos. In general, it will receive static content requests from clients for a website like HTML pages, files, images, videos and so on. 
on application server application servers are designed to host and execute applications or software programs it provides services like application logic processing transaction management and session management next one database server the primary purpose of a database server is to store and organize data in a structured manner it maintains the data in a way that allows for efficient retrieval modification and deletion database servers allow users and applications to query the data stored in the database they support different query languages example sql and provide mechanism to search and retrieve specific information from the database here sql means structured query language it will also take backups of the data regularly and recover it in case of data loss mail server the mail server stores incoming mails for each user in their respective mailboxes until they are retrieved by the user email clients it may handle tasks such as sending receiving and storing emails for users the mail server authenticate users before allowing them to send or retrieve emails dns server here dns means domain name system dns servers translate human readable domain names into ip addresses enabling users to access websites using familiar domain names instead of numerical ip address for example if we type www www.google.com in the browser the dns will translate the google.com to its ip address dns servers cache the results of previous queries to improve efficiency and reduce the response time for subsequent requests with this we have completed the discussion of different servers again these are not only the server types and there are many more next we will discuss the differences between physical servers virtual machines and containers after this topic you will have a better understanding of them physical servers are also called as bare metal servers in the past most of the servers for physical servers only it will give complete control of the hardware resources typically a server operating system will be installed on this physical server like windows server operating system linux server operating system or mac operating system in general only one application will be running on this type of model so it will give complete control of the application or software stack physical servers are isolated and it can provide a couple of benefits it is not affected by the noisy neighbor problem you must be wondering what is a noisy neighbor problem isn't it in the multi tenant system model the resources will be shared between the system because tenants use the same shared resources the activity of one tenant can have a negative impact on another tenant's use of the system so in physical server model we won't have this type of issue as the resources will be dedicated to one application or tenant another benefit of this model is it provides the highest level of security as in the multi tenant model there could possibly have a side channel attacks due to the design flaws in the modern microprocessor now let's look at some of the drawbacks this type of model is quite expensive and hard to manage it is also hard to scale as buying new hardware will take time now let's discuss the details of virtual machine a virtual machine is also called a vm it is a virtual environment that functions as a virtual computer system with its own cpu memory network interface and storage created on a physical hardware system it is no different from any other physical computer like a desktop laptop or server the process of creating such vms is called virtualization many vms run on physical hardware on top of the hardware the host operating system will be installed again on top of the host operating system System, a special piece of software called hypervisor will be installed so hypervisor manages virtual machines it creates an abstract layer over the hardware so that multiple virtual machines can run along each other each vm will have its own guest operating system on top of the guest operating system the application or software will run for the clients these days all the cloud providers like aws azure and gcp will provide virtual machines for running the applications we can choose from basic that is general purpose vms to high performance ones to manage applications now let's look at some of the benefits of virtual machines in comparison with physical servers virtual machines are cheaper to run many cloud providers are providing options such as pay as you go that means paying for the actual use of the vm in addition to that these vm share the same hardware which allows high resource utilizations these vms easy to scale and provide more flexibility for companies now let's look at some of the drawbacks virtual machines can be vulnerable to the noisy neighbor problem this is because the application coexists with another tenant's application if the other tenant application has some resource issues then those may impact our application as well also in this model both vms will share the same physical hardware therefore they are vulnerable to security attacks due to the design flaws in the modern microprocessor now let's look at containers a container is a lightweight and standalone package of an application with all its dependencies like libraries frameworks and its runtime like the other models we will also have hardware and host operating system here instead of virtualizing the hardware with hypervisor software 
we virtualize the operating system with a software called container engine. On top of the container engine, many of the containers will run. In each of the containers, we will have an isolated application environment. The container engine provides faster resources to these containers to run the applications. Since all the application dependencies and libraries are packaged together, they can run anywhere irrespective of the host operating system as long as the host operating system has the container engine. Now let's look at some of the benefits. Containers are lightweight and require fewer hardware resources. A physical server can host more containers than virtual machines. As these are packaged with all the dependencies, they are easier to deploy and maintain. In terms of drawbacks, containers are potentially less secure. They are exposed to security vulnerabilities at the operating system level as they share the same host operating system. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for staying till the end and supporting me. I hope you understood all the concepts in this video. In case any specific concept is not clear or required more detailed information, please feel free to mention it in the comment sections. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited. I'll see you with our next concept in module 3. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep learning.